There'd been talk of little else in these parts since it was confirmed that two and three para would lock horns in the army final. And from the off, the 1,400 inside the Corporal Bud VC gym and the thousands watching on BFPS Sport were in no doubt about the kind of treat in store. First into the ring at featherweight were Michael Gates of three para and Clyde Hogan looking to get two para off to the best possible start. His quality in the second round might have made the difference and he kept up his domination in the third round to not only win the bout but also take the best boxer award. All we can do is just hope that we can keep rolling, keep getting these wins behind us. Don't take anything for granted and just keep going forward as a team. Things got better for two para at lightweight. Dan Holmes survived an early onslaught from Luke Brewer to claim victory largely because he was able to land more scoring points against a top-class opponent. Two down, the defending champions needed a win and into the ring stepped one of their most experienced men at light welterweight, Joe Waterworth, who faced Matt Benge in the blue corner. Benge started the better, with Waterworth biding his time, but it was scored very closely by the judges, three paras man just getting the points decision. The fourth contest at welterweight was one of the best. Two paras, Chris Oliver looked very classy, but as in all these bouts, the word courage came instantly to the fore. Steve Preston from three para, only a month out of training. Despite losing quite a lot of blood from the nose, he continued to battle with no thought whatsoever of throwing in the towel, despite taking a standing count in the third round. Oliver was the clear winner, but Preston's performance earned him universal praise and the most gallant boxer award. I'm just trying to uh, take this as a learning curve and uh, I'll bounce back. Great support here tonight. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Couldn't ask for anything better. Two and three power in the final. What more could you want? At the interval, two para led 3-1, needing just two more wins to take the title from their arch rivals. But three para don't have an unbeaten record for 10 years for nothing, and they flew out of the traps in the second half in the shape of Liam Giles at light middleweight. His opponent, Jamie Found, found Giles unstoppable and early in the second round found himself on the canvas, floored by a left hook from which he never recovered. Knocks Jamie Found down. That was the best punch of the night. That was the only contest not to go to the distance, in itself a great tribute to the boxers, and the action showed no signs of letting up in an at times brutal battle between three paras captain Jay Williams and Ronnie Harris. Harris was three times pulled up by the referee and eventually deducted a point for slapping, which in part cost him the fight and brought three para level at three all. When Carwin James took on three paras David Webb, everyone knew it was going to the wire. A measured contest, just one on points by the man from two para, meant the defending champions would have no margin for error if they were going to retain the title. The cruiserweight battle was just that. Both unbeaten, Gaz Innes in the blue corner and James Nelson from three para fought themselves virtually to a standstill. Innes knowing that if he got the nod, it would be glory for two para. It was a heroic fight, but the judges came down on the side of Nelson in a contest many said was too close to call. What a round! And everyone, to a man and to a woman, on their feet. If three paras' nerves weren't frayed enough, the heavyweight contest decider between Joe Allen and James English gave the fans the finale they'd hoped for. A pulsating show which Allen looked to just be shading, but with the last punch of the night, English floored his opponent, sending the two para support into orbit. Most thought it was two paras' title, but the judges ruled Allen had done enough. He took the bout and three para remain army champions. What they have pulled out of the bag in terms of fitness, dieting, uh, concentration, sacrifices for both teams, having done a bit of it, a small portion of it, it's astonishing what they've done tonight. And um, all credit to any fighter that gets in there because they give so much. A change in organisation of the competition with regional rounds mean two and three para won't meet in the final again. This was a one-off, but it's a night few people will ever forget and one which will surely go down in the annals of Parachute Regiment's sporting history. John Mighton, Forces News, Colchester.